Hello my friends and welcome back to a continued blind let's play Ace Attorney Dual Destiny is the seventh game in the Ace Attorney series. My name is the Flightless Bird. This is your story based gaming channel and today well today I still think there's stuff to do before the trial which is why I didn't continue on after reaching this point because I figured we still had to meet this Dr. Crab. Although what's very possible is we may go to trial and then have an investigation and then talk to Dr. Crab and then go back to the trial. I just have a feeling that Dr. Crab did it. Even though I haven't met him yet. Even though, I mean, like, all my internals are basically screaming to me that this Dr. Crab did it. Because my suspect list doesn't seem as great when you think about it. Like, our swashbuckler here. Yeah, she could have done it to take control. And that's very possible. The only problem is, though, she hired us. Why would she hire us if she was a murderer? There's only one reason she would hire us if she's a murderer, and that's because she's trying to frame someone because she doesn't want Orla to die. But that's very intricate, and I don't think that's what this case is trying to do because that would make her... Well, that would make her, like, one of the smartest villains we've ever come across. And kudos to her if that's what happened. And kudos to the game for totally fooling me. I don't think that's what's happening. We know Bobby Fulpray didn't do it. I mean, it's it's kind of obvious that the detective didn't do it. Uh, let's see. The, the Orla, if, even if she did do it, she's more the weapon and not the killer. Uh, Shipley's dead. And unless he, unless it's all a scam and he faked his death, he's pretty much dead. Now, I will say, if he faked his death, that's brilliant again. I just don't know if it's true. Uh, Norma de Plume. It sounds like she did it because she's the most suspicious person, but at the same time, I, I, I don't know. It, it looks like she's... Okay, if Norma de Plume did it, it's because of this picture here. Uh, where's the picture at? If Norma de Plume did it, it's because of this picture here where she's using the whistle to have the orca attack someone. This is plausible. I, I just get the feeling that she didn't do it. But if she did do it, it's it I I can prove that sh she had the means to do it. Uh Marlon, if he did it, I would be shocked. He seems too carefree loving. Again, could have said the game if they fooled me here. Uh Pearls, there's no way if they if she did it. If she did it, or if the penguin did it, I'm just rage quitting this entire series and saying screw this series. <laughs> because if the penguin is guilty or Pearl is guilty, I just can't live in this world anymore. All right, I've I've uh I, I've given way too long of a description here. We're already three minutes of video, so let's get started, shall we? I hope you all having a wonderful, fantastic day today. Oh, you're right. So, did you find anything? Of course he didn't. Remember, even if you don't succeed, it's the effort to make that's important. Is he trying to console me? Let's show them the evidence we found. The one that points to a human culprit. Right, because we won't let Orla be put down. Please, take a look at this bloodstained coin. Eek! The cease and desist at once! What kind of man shows a lady blood? Ark, did you have to get so worked up? What are you terrorizing this lady with? Come now, let's see it. We found this coin besides the Orca pool. We did see a large number of coins beside the pool, but not one with blood in it. We just learned there's about 300 of these, weighing about 7 pounds in total. Now, what do you suppose would happen if a person was assaulted with that many coins? What? So you're saying the coins might have been used like some kind of blunt weapon? If the blood belongs to the victim, then yes, it's entirely possible. Hmm, but I want to call it just as a proof that the real culprit was a human. You want it? Why not? Do you think an orca could swing a pile of coins? Because there had to be put there had to be something to put the coins in to make them into a weapon. Without that something, it's just not going to be enough to pass the muster. But I will say that your theory does seem to warrant further investigation. 
I will call the prosecutor's office and ask to be investigated for a possible crime making all iron and gold. You will? Well, thank you very much, Bobby. I really hope Detective Fulbright can convince them. Hmm, you won't believe the answer that I got! When I explained your passion for this case and the police's investigation, they said that the prosecutor I mentioned earlier would be willing to take this to court. Really? So that does mean a new suspect has emerged? No, I'm afraid not. To be frank, prosecutor Blackwell said he just wants to boo the orca's coat in court. <laughs> He just wants to be right. I love that. Uh, that's just so good. Ah. What? It's Prescott Blackwell that wants to Prescott Orla? I'm glad that's Blackwell. That's great. That's fine, Detective. Thanks for arranging this for us. Well, I must say, you're taking this rather calmly. Defending Orla in court was my idea from the start. And I'll do whatever it takes to save her. Hmm, in that case, I'll do whatever I can as well to see that justice is served. Mr. Plume, will you be a witness for the prosecution? A trial for a killer whale. I've never heard of such recklessness before in my life. But I will reveal the truth about this killer whale and invite all about it. Ha ha ha, sounds like a plan. Now if you'll just come along with me. We had to prepare for tomorrow, and I still had to arrange for an autopsy. Oh, ho, ho! I look forward to tomorrow. Until then, blue liar and yellow fan. Okay, actually, don't try to shoot at me. <laughs> I am not a fan. Well, at least we managed to get the case to go to trial. But how in the world do we defend an orca in court anyway? To be honest, I'm not really sure myself. <laughs> Plus, Mr. Plume said Ola bit the victim. This trial sure isn't going to be easy. But I love a challenge. Ah ha ha, then we ought to be just fine. Guess I should go with that swashbuckler spectacular you're watching this morning. Yeah, we can have a formal viewing back at the office. There's nothing decisive against oil in the security tape, but that doesn't mean much. I'll just have to find a more concrete way to save oil at tomorrow's trial or else. Oh, I guess I was wrong. We are going to trial. So is the uh, Dr. Crab just a red herring and someone else did it? Because if so, I mean, the plume seems like the most natural person to have done it, but I honestly am unsure. I like being unsure. Being unsure is great. I just didn't think we would be going to trial right away. Uh, July 21st, 921 AM, District Court, Defendant Lobby. Number three. Good morning, Mr. Wright. Good morning, chipper as ever this morning, I see. I'm just thankful we actually get to have a trial for Ola. As a matter of fact, I just ran a few laps around the courthouse to get extra pumped. And I just splashed my face with some water to get the sleep out of my eyes. Oh, I also queued the Swashbuckler video so we can watch it anytime. Swashbuckler video added to the court record a TV recording of performance between Ola, Sasha, and Jack simply as pirates. Thanks! It just might help our case. I know you've seen this before, but now I'm looking for something. I don't know what this something is, but I'm trying to find a something. He made it just in time. We be pirates, we love to sail the seven seas. Just a bunch of scallywags who are as free as free can be. We swim through storms and waves, all because you see. Grand treasure and adventures waiting just for me. I got nothing. I got absolutely nothing. There was nothing in that video that I saw that was pertaining to the case. 
Like, I was trying to see, is there anything specific that I didn't notice before that I might not have noticed because I wasn't looking for it, but I did not see a single thing that jumps out to me as, hey, flightless, this is, this is something that's important. Thanks, it just might help our case. By the way, you have some serious dark circles. Did you sit late watching this? The only thing I can think of is that Orla jumped up to do the trick, but no one was blowing the whistle. So maybe someone had to be off screen blowing the whistle for the trick to occur. But again, I don't see how, I mean, that would just say that someone else knows the, um, uh, the whistle thing. Oh. Ah! What? Mummy? No, I, I just woke up early. That's all. Guess I need to cover them up. I get ragged on enough as if I prosecuted Blackwell. Speaking of being pumped, I'm pretty sure... Fi I'm pretty fired up for this trial, too. It's been a while. Hehe, <laughs> that explains why here is spikier than usual. I mean, look at it. It's all super pokey and prickly and stuff. It's amazing. That was a compliment, right? <laughs> Good luck, Mr. Nick. I'll be cheering you on from the gallery. Thanks, Pearls. It's been so long. I'm actually a little nervous. Good morning, Mr. Lawyer! Oh, Mr. Rhymes. You came to watch the tryout. Of course everyone would be here, right? Where's Sasha at? Yeah, Sasha's back in the aquarium with Yorka. So I thought I'd better come here to watch for her. Well, don't you worry. We're going to win for Arla. Isn't that right, boss? I'm really surprised uh, she's not here. I would I would think that she would be to try to figure out a way to defend her friend. Right. One unprecedented trial coming right up. July 21st, 9.30 a.m. District Court Courtroom Number 4. Day 1. The court is now in session. All rise. Court is now in session with the trail of Willis Shipley. The defense is ready, your honor. Huh. Must we waste words on this? Prosecutor Simon Blackwell. Known as the Twisted Samurai, he's a prosecutor who's also a convicted felon. They say he never conducts a trial without his little hawk Taka by his side. Hey Taka, you've been replaced as the best character in the game by rifle. Don't worry, you're still high up there, you're still S tier. Uh, you're just now number two, but you know, it's okay. You, you, it, it, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, please don't kill me. Hmm, Mr. Wright, it's been quite a while since I've seen you like that. The yeah, lawyer image suits you. You look uh, almost younger somehow. Thank you, your honor. And you look as young as ever yourself. Haha, <laughs> well, I have to keep up with you folks at your will. By the way, has the defendant arrived at court yet? Surely you jest your baldness. Did you not receive the memo? The defendant, or Shipley, is an orca at Shipshape Aquarium. An orca? What the heck am I doing here? Why are we prosecuting a shark? A whale? Or a fish? Uh, what, the, what the heck is an orca anyway? Some sort of animal it seems to see. Anyway, arrangements this trial were made only yesterday, so I had time to review and I really wish I should have. My an orca is defendant? Why? It's patently absurd, I tell you. Hmm. Direct your comments to the defense. He's the absurd fellow who insists on defending the orca in court in the first place. Well, absurd or not, I will carry out my duty to defend my client. Your duty to defend your crying aunt? Did you mean your crying orca, Mr. Wright? What? If we are to proceed, we must treat the orca as we would any other defendant. Every soul, be it a man or beast, is of equal value. You know, I wonder if he's saying that because he loves his bird so much so he can understand what an animal is like. And maybe he's doing this because he realizes 
uh, if Taka was ever put on trial for something, he would defend his bird. I would like to believe that. Can we believe that? Because if so, that makes him, um... It makes him pretty noble and cool. I mean, he's already kind of cool. The question is whether that soul is painted in black or white. Take Taka, for example. He is as human in spirit as you or I. The real question is, am I in for more pain as always? Well, you don't got someone whipping you at least. But he does have a sword. So instead of being whipped, he just cuts your head off. Hmm, man, look, we're not. I suppose the defendant is still the defendant. Right. Yeah, let's go with that. And I vow to render my verdict fairly and impartially. Ahem. Now then, Prosecutor Black Quill. Your opening statement, if you would, please. I suppose I can hardly leave it to someone who nothing of the defendant. Very well, listen carefully. The orca murdered the owner of Ship Shape Aquarium in the aquarium's orca pool. The orca apparently toyed with the victim mercilessly as he died. A sadistic orca, what a chilling thought. And where exactly is this defendant now? Inside this. A cell phone, prosecutor Black Quill? That's a really cool phone. Hmm, time marches on your baldness, with or without us. I borrowed this TV phone from the aquarium, which will allow us to interact with the orca. A TV phone? Well, very well. Some newfangled technology, hmm, very cool. The court accepts it into evidence. TV phone added to the court record. A cell phone used by Shipshape Aquarium South. This model can connect to TVs and be used to conduct teleconferencing. We will be able to view the defendant in question on this large monitor. Full bright. Prepare for transmission. Ha ha ha! You've got it, Boss Good Black Will! <laughs> we will proceed with the defendant on telecast. Hmm, so that is the orca that stands accused, is it? Aww. Aww. She's waving a flipper at us. Maybe she's cheering us on? Hola. Wish Phoenix and Athena luck. Aww. Oh, it's quite cute, isn't it? And this adorable creature is suspected of killing a man? Hola's really point on the charm, huh? She is far from cute. She is a violent and reckless animal. That's right. The name's Bobby Fulbright, and I'll be taking over the explaining from here. Now, if I could direct your attention to this diagram of the crime scene. Following the report of an orc attack, we the police raced on over to Ship Ship Aquarium. There, we found a guest who says she saw the orca and the victim from the visitor's corridor. As the witness was watching, the orca suddenly went crazy and attacked the victim. The orca was the only one there, therefore no one else could have committed the crime. It's not quite finished, but I have a portion of the autopsy report here. So what if someone knocked Shipley into the water, and then the orca dove down to try to get the body, and push the body to the top, but... Shipley was already dead due to head trauma. It's the death from brain contusion, so it's instant. There are signs of blunt force trauma all over the body. Or are those signs of blunt force trauma before or after the incident? Because, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. If if the orca tried to save Shipley because the Ola thought Shipley was drowning, uh, that's why the body was found over the side like it was, right? Because the body wasn't found in the pool. I mean, the white outline was over the edge. Can't imagine Tira being attacked underwater by such a large creature. But attack, it did. Prepare yourself for the grisly details of your baldness. The prosecution moves to introduce a witness, Fulbright. You got it, Prosecutor Blackwell, and justice we trust! 
One brave lady whose fine sense of justice compelled it is be coming right up. How dare you make me wait? Don't you know that I'm a busy woman? I would have you written an entire book for all time I spent in that lobby. Um, Prosecutor Black Quill? Ah, uh, well. I am Norma De Plume, and I'm a non fiction writer. Am I the only one who isn't telepathic here? Looks like she can read into people's words just as well as I can read into people's hearts. Not, not everything needs to be a competition, Athena. What? Norma De Plume? Great non fiction writer, Miss Norma De Plume herself? I read all your works and enjoy them immensely. Oh, I I'm not surprised. Your million seller, the great grief for the great deep. <laughs> I, I gotta hand it to him though. That's a great title. That is an amazing title. The great grief for the great thief is one of my favorites. Oh, are you a fan, your honor? I could give you my autograph, if you'd like. Uh, wait a sec. could swear you look much different in the photos in your book. Well, I used one some ten years ago in my book so that the paparazzi won't harass me. Huh? The judge seems so shocked. Or maybe he's right. Uh, I get so easily faked out in video games because they'll put a really subtle clue at the beginning of something and then later on they'll be like hey you remember that you remember that no you don't but haha -ha, we planted that clue back there and you missed it but you should have missed it because if you wouldn't have missed it then you would have known but now you're shocked because we fooled you i feel like this may be what the game is doing what if she's not the plume what if she is someone else claiming to be the plume hmm the judge seems so shocked the visual disconnect must really be doing a number on his Mr. His Honor's head. See, we're all downing him. But what if he's right? Can we get started, please? If I find you to be lacking as a judge, you will see your debut in my books. Such harsh comments. You might really must be the real Norma de Plume. Who knew Mr. Plume was so famous? And now, Chamberlain, tell the court what you saw and keep it brief. I would thank you to not order me around. I am perfectly willing to tell everyone what I witnessed was the moment of the murder. Very well then. Uh, please proceed with your testimony. What is testimony? The moment of the murder. I went to Ship Ship Aquarium to see the killer whale. As I was watching the killer whale from the visitor's corridor, it suddenly went crazy. I saw the killer whale bite the victim to death with its huge mouth and deadly teeth. Attempting to remain calm, I reported the incident to the police immediately. Hmm, I told the defendant really did all that? Mmm, it must be much more vicious than it looks. Now, deliver your judgment so I may carry out the sentence. Objection! So good to hear that old-fashioned objection. Um, the, uh, the defense would like to do some defending first, if that's alright with you. Hmm, must you drag this out with your tomfoolery? The defense has always has a right to cross examine the witness, you know that. A fellow inmate told me just this morning, if you want something signed, all you need is the document and the witness. Let me guess, they were convicted for contract fraud, right? Huh. All we need in this case is the evidence and a witness to convict. It's as simple as that. Looks like I guessed right. My turn to slam the desk. Sorry, but as Mr. As Miss Sykes said, the defense has every right to cross-examine. Is it that correct, Your Honor? Now, yes, of course. 
You may proceed with your cross examination, Mr. Wright. Huh. I shall relish the sight of you thrashing around in vain. Yeah, we'll just see about that. Cross examination! The moment of the murder! Yeah, sure, let's go. I went to Ship Ship Aquarium to see the killer whale. Why did you want to see the orca? Well, it is the featured attraction of the aquarium after all. Hmm, why waste energy on such tripe? There is but one attraction in Ship Ship Aquarium that is worth anyone's time. The penguin? And that is the penguins. Oh! He just became the greatest character of all time. Yep, that's right. Well, okay, Rifle's still number one. But the fact that he loves the penguins is the best. Is it that right, Taka, my friend? Hold on, whoa, 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 whoa. Is he saying that Taka wants to eat the penguins? Because if so, he became the worst character in the history of Ace Attorney series. Alrighty then. I guess Pusket Blackwell is for the birds. Okay, I think he likes the penguins. Because he likes birds, even flightless ones. So I think he might be the best character of all time. Yeah. Guess I should jot that down. Note to self, Pusket Blackwell is on Team Rifle. <laughs> I'm on Team Rifle. Proud supporter of Team Rifle right here. Purse on the brain. Oh, it's a... The trophy is a picture of the penguin doing his little flappy things with his wings. For Pressy to play Melissa Blackwell's take of what ought to be the featured attraction in this special episode Dual Destinies. Oh, that's so great! Oh, that's amazing. That is... That is the coolest thing of all time. Birds on the brain. I love that. And uh, so you want to see Orca in his take? Yes, that's right. As I was watching the killer whale from the visitor's corridor, it suddenly went crazy. Holy. The orca suddenly went crazy, did she? Yes, it took a long look at me, and then all of it once, it started going berserk. Did you do anything to make her angry? I did nothing more than simply glare at it from the visitor's corridor. She glared at orca, Ola? And that's what caused her to go berserk? Objection! The reason... The reason the defendant went mad is not the issue here. Only that she did once she entered that state. In any case, the killer whale began behaving vividly, wildly, in front of my very eyes, and then... I saw the killer whale bite the victim to death with its huge mouth and the deadly teeth! Holy. So you're saying you saw the very moment of the victim's death? That is exactly what I'm saying! Oh, it was simply dreadful! It was as frightening as losing one's manuscript just before a deadline! I suppose for a writer that would be pretty terrifying. I witnessed the killer whale's horrific act, and I knew I had to do something, so... Attempting to remain calm, I reported the incident to the police immediately! Holy. Why were the police the first ones you contacted? I was afraid if I told the aquarium staff, they might try to cover it up. Of course, I immediately told the aquarium security after my call to the police. I believe I deserve a place for my sweet decision-making skills under pressure. Mr. Plume is the most assertive witness I've ever seen. We better do our best to look like big shot lawyers if we want to match her intensity. Mr. Plume, I praise your sweet decision-making skills under pressure. That was more kiss-up than big shot. <laughs> I suppose it was unrealistic to expect Bisha from Mr. Wright. Huh. How fitting for a small fry to praise a big shot. How about cutting this small fry some slack, you big meanies? The important thing here is, did she really see the moment of the murder? 
You're very to go, aren't you, Mr. Wright? I see it in eyes and in your heart. Ah, ha, ha. I guess I really am a lawyer, heart. So what I want to know is... Here... Bite the victim to death. And yet yeah, autopsy report says contusion from head. Death ought to be a result of orca attack. But she said it bit him to death. Not charged at him to death. You see, you could also show the videotape. I still can't see where the guy is. I guess they kind of censored it. They put the rock in the way. Basically said, you know, the, 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 or the orca charged at him. Wait, what was the time on this? Objection! I pressed wrong button. But it's okay, because that was still the right answer. <laughs> I know it had to be one of the two. Anyway, so it worked. It would seem that you are mistaken, Mr. Plume. I beg your pardon? The autopsy report does indeed say, death thought to be a result of orc attack. But the actual cause of death is contusion from head trauma, not being bitten. What? But, but, but I'm sure the victim was bitten. Hmm, I don't believe that can be true. The security footage doesn't show anything of the kind. Objection. Hmm. Just as I suspected. Now, now, I will say this, though. Hmm. Here, here's the thing. She's at the scene of the crime, right? That photo was taken after um, he fell into the water. And I was thinking maybe that she blew the whistle. Like, here's the thing. Even if she blew the whistle to have the Orla, Orla attack um, Shipley... The cause of death is believed to be a uh, blow to the head with points, right? So, she couldn't have been here and up top where the captain was at the same time. That's impossible. Although she could be an accomplice, I guess. Hmm, just as I suspected. I knew you would pick out the footage behind full bites back. Well, what did you expect when you wouldn't play nice and share? But unfortunately for you, the footage you saw was only one small part. That's weird. Did I click the footage or I click the autopsy? Huh. Yesterday, after I decided to take this course to trial, I re reviewed all of the evidence. Taka, the evidence I give to you for safekeeping. <laughs> I love that picture, that's so funny. Guess that hawk is higher up on the pecking order than Fulbright in Blackwell's book. Hmm, very well, let's view the footage. Roll the footage. What's this? You see, it's not that he's biting Blackwell, he's trying to save his life by dragging him back up to the surface. The orca is biting the victim! No, no way! I have to say that this appears to be very dang in evidence. Security footage updated. Uh, the footage starts at Prime Sunny on opening time. No, I can't believe Ola really bit him. And there is more. Look at this. This photograph was taken while the body was being examined. Hmm, there seems to be a strange bruise on the victim's right wrist. Yeah, I see that. I all had the crime lab examine the bruise and calculate its relevance to the case at hand. What's important right now is evidence that points to the orca as the killer. Look at the left side of the body. See the orca's tooth marks in the victim's clothes? Well, yes, you do appear to suggest that she did in fact bite the victim. Huh? 
photo of the body updated in the court record. I told you so. And then the killer whale swam up to the surface with the victim in its mouth. Yeah, it's trying to save his life, is what it's trying to do. Poor Orla didn't realize that he was already dead. Objection! However, in the autopsy report, the cause of death is contusion from head trauma. Objection! You are much too impetuous, right, Dono. Granted, the orca biting the victim was not the cause of death. The witness was mistaken about that. Then what explanation is there for what the witness saw? Did I not say in the beginning the orca toyed with the victim mercilessly? Well, my goodness! After killing the victim, the defendant swam around with his dead body in her mouth. Just like any other predator toying with its prey. Erg. But Mr. Wright, the hearts of the people in the gallery are suddenly filled with fear. Fear of Ola. So, uh, the defendant bit the victim after she had killed him. But if that's the case, then we must still figure out how the defendant killed the victim. Prosecutor Blackquill, do you have a sound theory to give to this court? I wouldn't be standing here if I couldn't prove whether the orca's heart was black or white. But Ola is black and white. Her body, I mean. <laughs> Athena, please try not to provoke Prosecutor Blackwell. Yeah, he's also very dressed in black and white. The witness also observed the actual moment of the murder. Think back, word mistress. Think back to what you observed before the orca bit the victim. Ah, I see what you're driving at. So, that was the true moment of the murder, was it? Now, explain it in a way that even these simpletons can understand. There you go again. Order me around. Stop that this instant. But whatever. I don't mind telling my story. I saw the killer whale before it toyed with the body as well. I saw it the moment it killed the victim by headbutting him. Oh, Ola killed a victim by headbutting him? That's right. It defamed the victim over and over again. Recall that the autopsy report stated that there were bruises all over his body. Recall as well how persistent the defendant can be when she's attacking her prey. And we all just saw the killer whale headbutting the victim and the footage. Don't forget. Hmm, that footage backs up Mr. Plume's testimony. But there's also something very important it does not show. Now, do you see what a menace this killer whale is? Objection! I'm sorry, but I can't allow your testimony to stand unchallenged. Looking at this footage, the orca... ...certainly seems to be headbutting something. But you'll note that something is not the victim. Oh! What? Okay, that's... Uh, I want to look away, but I can't. <laughs> Even if it was the victim, you couldn't have seen him from where you were, could you? Uh, 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 what? Nani? Oh, oh, well, I suppose not. Mr. Plume, did you actually witness the victim getting headbutted by the defendant? Ah, uh, let's see. Oh, I remember it now. As I recall, a rock in the shape of a skull was obstructing my view. So you're admitting that you couldn't see the victim? Yes, yes, I suppose I am. However, immediately after the headbutting, the victim came floating up. He came up from behind the skull-shaped back and his body was all limp. What else could I think except that the killer whale was headbutting the victim? Objection! But if you didn't actually see the moment of the attack itself, then it's just purely conjecture. Objection! <sighs> Must I do so everything around here? How dare you speak so rudely to me? There's no need for hysterics. Clear your mind and recall how you reached your conclusion. Though you couldn't see what the orca was attacking, you didn't need to, did you?
Because you knew she was behaving exactly as she had only one year prior. Wait, what? Oh! Wait, what? One year ago? That's right. Yes, that's it. That's how a new day killer whale was headbutting the victim. I'm sorry, but could someone explain exactly what happened a year ago? If you must know, a very similar incident occurred only last year in which... For some reason, I'm talking like the plume with him. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Let me try it again. The defendant murdered her trainer. Wait, what? What? You all got murdered a trainer, you say? Wait, what? What? Is this really true? This is not looking good for us. It's all in this book. The Killer Killer Whale by Norma de Plume. That book, Killer Killer Whale. Well, that's Mr. Plume's latest work. I was just thinking of picking that up. The Killer Killer Whale added to the court record a non-fiction book about, uh, by Norma de Plume. It's about the case from last year. This is information we did not know. Orca kills its trainer. Last year, the defendant killed her trainer in the middle of a show. The orca headbutted and bit the victim. The same thing she's accused of in this case. Isn't that convenient? The orca killed two people? Well, I think it's a minute. It's guilty, guilty, I say. I never want to go to the beach again. You're not going to fight a kill wheel at the beach. No, now everyone's even more convinced that Ola did it. We were doing so well, but now... Now everyone in the room has a bad impression of Orla. I don't want to think she did it. But it's hard to keep on believing in somebody who can't even tell me her side. Phoenix, Athena, you gotta believe in Orla. There's no way that she killed anybody. You gotta save her, please. I'm begging you. Always believe in your client, Sasha. What am I doing down in my client like this? This is the time to be strong. I believe in Ola, and I'm ready to fight for our clients. I'll take everybody in this courtroom if I have to. Don't you worry, Sasha. We won't give up on Ola. We'll defend her to the very end. Thank you. Thank you, both of you. We are Ola's lawyers. Who else but us can save her? We can't give up on her now. Hmm. One instant there, you were afraid of the orca, weren't you, Dono? Wait, Dono. When you saw the photograph of the victim from a year ago, you turned paler than me. You saw right through me. It's obvious you have neither the guts nor the determination to defend the Orca. It's true that Orca Ola can't speak, and I don't know her thoughts. But there's a certain someone who believes in Ola with all her heart. I respect the trust she has in Ola, so I'm willing to believe in Ola too. Huh, and what do you know about orcas? Nothing, that's what. So allow me to fill you in. Do you have any idea why orcas are also called killer whales? Because they are cunning and merciless predators that hunt and even kill true whales. So, uh, killer whales? Really are killers. Terrifying creatures indeed. I can't bear to hear any more such rubbish as trusting a killer. Can you, your baldness? No matter what you say, I will continue to believe. Don't give up hope that easily, you know. Dullard. You don't know when to give up, do you? Very well, I will give you a chance to prove just how determined you are. Witness, spare no quarter and lay the full truth on them. Oh ho ho, but of course, that is what I do after all. That's good, Black Will. What will you have the witness testify about? I shall have her testify about what she saw and what she heard. Okay, I mean, normally when you go to testify, that's what we should do. What she heard. Be well, Mr. Plume. Please tell the court what you saw and what you heard. 
Witness testimony. What I saw and what I heard. The killer's way of behavior was exactly the same as a year ago. As I approached the pearl, the killer whale suddenly started singing. I was calm when I saw it, to, when I saw it, it started to headbutt. But when the pirate hat and victim came floating up, I let out a scream. Wait, came floating up? How would you know it came floating up? You're on the bottom. Hmm, so that we're gonna display the same behavior as the NC a year ago. That's right. There's what you super cries. It was singing. As I approached the pearl, the killer whale suddenly started singing. It kept headbutting while it sang the swashbuckler, the swashbuckler spectacular song. That's right, it was singing the same song it sang in the Aquarian Saves show back then. It was singing while it was headbutting. Oh, it was terribly perfect, horribly, perfectly horrible. Okay, I want to know if this had a year, if this was made, you know, in the last six months. Or if it was made a year ago, but it doesn't say. Hmm, I don't see a single obvious inconsistency in this testimony. It's clear I won't be able to take apart her assessments with evidence alone. Mr. Wright, now would be a good time for me to put my skills to work. It's time to show what analytical psychology can really do. You seem pretty confident. Let me guess. You notice a contradiction between the testimony and her emotions. You bet I did. And once we expose it, we just might be able to cack her. No, scratch that. Make it will definitely be able to. Then, let's give your knowledge of analytical psychology a try. You got it, boss. A complete analysis of Mr. Blimp's heart coming right up. Hmm. I'm not a huge fan of these so far. Let's see if this one is done... In a way that I can understand. Hmm. The killer whale's behavior was exactly the same as a year ago. Nothing pulsing here. As I approached the pool, the killer whale suddenly started singing. Here she's in shock because she wouldn't expect the killer whale to sing. I was calm when I saw it start to headbutt. Okay, she's provoking a sadness thing here. But she can't see the body because the skull rock is obstructing her view. So why would she be sad at the headbutt? But when the pirate hat and victim came floating up, I let out a scream. Okay, here she's less sad. <clears throat> so do we go with sadness here because she can't see it? Got it! So she said she can't see the body at that point. Mr. Plume, Ola really frightened you with her head button, didn't she? Don't be upset. I certainly was not frightened by the likes of any killer whale. It must have been something else that scared her then, boss. However, I do remember being very afraid for some reason while it was doing that. It sounds like maybe you saw something we haven't discussed yet. Take your time. Try to remember what it was. What did you see? This is practically turning into a counseling session. <laughs> At the dots, I saw something. Oh, ah, I, I remember now. Okay, that was the right answer. Okay, good. Now if you could please tell the court what you saw. I saw, I saw, I saw bright red blood. The killer whale swimming caused the victim to bleed. There was a great cloud of blood. What? Yes, that's it. That's why I was so sure. That's when I knew the killer whale had killed a person for a second time. Well, that was a very compelling statement indeed. Looking at this again, there does appear to be something that could be a cloud of blood. Yeah. So a terror was reaction to blood, was it? That would certainly explain what happened yesterday. Please take a look at this blood sink point. Eek! To cease and desist at once. Well, what kind of men shows a lady blood? Er, she doesn't have to get so worked up. I was badly injured during an interview once. Ever since then, I've been terrified of blood. 
The very sight of it dreadfully upsets my delicate sensibilities. This is a bad turn. And Mr. Plume saw blood. Then does that mean Ola really did attack the victim? It would appear that orcas are even more vicious than I am. So, how does it feel to be thoroughly rammed by your own cross-examination, right, Dunno? What do we do now, boss? Arr, that testimony was not at all what I expected to hear. Wait a minute. There's still some disco left in Mr. Plim's hat. What? You mean there's more? Yes, but there's no telling what it is. It could be something even more damaging. Ugh. Is there even anything left of our case to damage? Well, whatever it is, we have to face it head on. Athena, you believe in Ola, right? If so, there's no reason for us to shy away from the truth. Yeah, you're right. I know we can handle the truth, whatever it is. Let's delve a little deeper. You've got it, boss. I One thing I do like about these, though, is I like how these things add something to the picture. So like here when it says info update, you, you, you see an entirely like new thing. And I like how it clarifies things. So after I started head buttoning, I saw that awful blood and was terrified. Okay, you would be sad here. And you would be terrified. But when the pirate hat and victim came floating up, I left out the screen. My question is, why is she less sad? Like, her sadness went down. Got it. Oh, that's right. It's supposed to be fear, too. Someone had mentioned that. It's supposed to be sadness and fear. I had forgotten that's a thing. But I still think I got to the right answer. Huh? Her fear appears to lessen at this statement. Mr. Plume, weren't you afraid when you saw the victim with blood coming out of him? My, that's a very good question. I was shaken after witnessing a murder, yes, but then the blood seemed to disappear. Disappear? Why do you suppose that was? Simple. It was because of the pirate hat. I did the killer whale put the hat on. The cloud of blood disappeared. That doesn't make any sense at all. Objection! And how exactly does that work? Exactly. How should I know? I'm just telling you what I remember, blue boy. Wait a minute. From whom was this blood that Mr. Plume saw actually coming from? It's gotta be Shipley, right? Or could it be Orca? Take that! The obvious thing to assume would be that was a victim was bleeding. But if that were the case, why would Orla putting on a hat make the blood disappear? Unless... So it's the Orca that was bleeding? Take that! Consider this. Maybe the one who was bleeding wasn't the victim. I beg your pardon. What kind of ridiculous nonsense is that? There was no one else in that pool besides the victim. Oh, I wouldn't say there was no one else. It is an orca pool, after all. What? Then, there is, then where is this alleged injury on the defendant? I'm not sure, but if simply wearing the pirate hat made the blood disappear... Then the blood must have been coming from somewhere on Ola's head, but still, the amount of blood would be coming out would, like, push the hat off, right? What? That's a really weird scene there. The orca's head. What are you putting on about now? Please think about it again, Mr. Plume. Think back to what you really saw. Ah, I. That is. That the one who was bleeding was not the victim, but the killer whale? Ang, I remember now. There wasn't any blood coming from the victim after all. See, I like how it gets updated. Okay, 0%. Bye-bye! We did it. Analytical psychology got us what we needed from her. That was a huge help, Athena. It was also pretty dicey for a while, though. Well, this is a surprise. Well, the witness saw was the defendants, not the victims. That is correct. And since there was no blood coming from the victim, 
There's only one thing we can conclude. That's what Mr. Plume witness was not the moment of the murder as she claims. Objection! I thought you were unarmed, but it turns out you were concealing a sword all along. Nevertheless, it is far too dull to cut to the bone. Meaning? I grant that what that witness saw was not the victim's blood, but it proves nothing. After all, being rammed doesn't always result in a wound that bleeds, now does it? Death from internal hemorrhaging is also a possibility. <laughs> ah, he has a point there. If you wish to challenge me to a duel, you'll need a sharper blade than that if I don't know. I demand evidence that proves a witness did not see the moment of the murder. Ah! There must be something. Think, Phoenix. If I'm correct, then the victim's death occurred uh, before the plume song. The victim was already dead when Ola started her head bunny. Then that would mean he died sometime before Mr. Plume was watching her. The events Mr. Plume witnessed took place at around 10, 10 a.m. I must have something that can tell us about what happened before 10, 10 a.m. Um. Before. Meet the captain at the orca pool at 7 a.m. It's the only thing that has a time. This is the only thing that has a timer on it. Take that! And that's not it. This is the evidence that proves Mr. Plum did not see the moment of the murder. Okay, we're supposed to talk about the moment of the murder. Hmm, I'm not sure what really related to what Mr. Plum did or didn't witness. But you're not sure, right? No, we can be quite sure it's unrelated. Yes, great. Ouch, I guess we can be... The events Mr. Plum witness took place at around 1010. I must have something that can tell us about what happened before 1010. The only other thing that we have was Pearls apparently entered the staff border here. But it doesn't tell me a time or anything. Because if I could say that Pearls was here and saw something. I don't have anything that talks about a timer. I said something that could tell us about what happened before 10.10. Four ten ten. I don't have anything that says something about time. Gold coins. I mean, this is the only thing that says. The footage starts at Aquarian's 10 a.m. opening, but when you click on it, it clearly shows just 10.09 and 10.10. 10. It doesn't show anything before this time, which would make sense if it started at 10 a.m. But Pearls was here as well, and she was here earlier in the day. Take that! That's not it. Okay, did we just show the video cam? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of stuck here because... Take that. Okay, here we go. I mean, that's that's kind of... Because the, the camera says it starts at 10, but then it shows us only two video pictures. So you just think, oh, well, it started at 10, but where's the rest of the footage? But there's no evidence to suggest there's more footage. 
I don't know. Maybe I just misread this one, but that one kind of, that one kind of confused me. Uh, we've only seen footage from 10.09 to 10.10, which means there's still footage going further before that we need to check. Your Honor, I request that all the security footage be played for the court. Oh, the footage! Mr. Plume witnessed a cloud of blood at around 10.10 a.m., but I believe the victim was already dead by that time. So your search is the murder took place before Mr. Plume arrived? Exactly. Security camera footage starts at 10 o'clock a.m. when the aquarium opened. And I believe there is vital evidence in the 10 minutes before. Hmm. You are quite the gambling man, right, Dunno? Are you honestly willing to risk everything on those mere 10 minutes? I bet on slimmer chances before. But when he puts it that way... My boss is no coward, Mr. Good Blackwell. I suggest you get ready to eat humble pie. Uh-oh. Can't back down now. Well, it depends on that confidence and points. Boss Good Blackwell is security footage. Ah, poor Bright. Roger! I had the rest of the security footage right here. Very well. Please play for the court. Please, please have something for me. We're looking for him being tossed into the water. This is what looked like at 10, 10 a.m. The witness can be seen here. All right, I'll just back the footage up to the beginning now. Ten o six. Hmm. It appears Mr. Bloom hasn't arrived yet at this point. Now let's see if I can find something from before this point in time. Ten o three. Ten o'clock. We didn't see any body get plunged in. Why Why did we not see the body get plunged in? Uh. Ah. Huh? Is that it? Yep, that's all the footage there is. There should be some footage of the body hitting the water. Well, Mr. Wright, did you see what you're looking for? We got nothing. Ah. Well, right to know. Those were the 10 minutes you placed a bet on. Did you see anything of significance? What I saw was something I should have seen. Did I see something important? I better think about this carefully. In the footage, we see uh, something important because we don't see anything. So therefore, nothing important. But the point is, we see nothing important, but that is something of important. Ah! We can see nothing of importance in that footage, but that's a point. Huh, just as I thought. But the point is, we see nothing of a point, so we should see the body hitting the water. Ha ha ha, you're right about that. That section was completely meaningless. It doesn't show a thing. That's why I didn't submit it as evidence. Objection! No, it's just the opposite. Yes, thank you! That's what I was saying. Huh, what do you mean by that? In this 10 minutes of footage, something important should be there that isn't. Detective Fulbright, this footage should have been submitted as evidence. What? Are you questioning the way I carried out my duty to justice? Mr. Wright, please explain yourself. What is this important thing they say should be the footage but isn't? How do I say it? How do I say there's a dead body? Take that! The important thing we should see in the footage is the victim himself, Jack Shipley. Okay, there we go. I don't know about you, but I didn't see him in the pool, in the footage. Ooh. Huh. Arg! That's right! If the victim is not shown entering the pool in the footage, it means that he must have been there by the skull rock during those 10 minutes. But no human being can hold their breath underwater for that long. Wait a minute, are you saying? When the security camera started up at 10 a.m., the victim was already dead. Huh. What? So I just thought there was an error in the footage, but no, it, it implies that he must have been there all along. Order, order in the court. That's the case, and when was the victim murdered? I don't know, Your Honor. But we now know it has seems to have been sometime before 10 a.m. Therefore, this footage can no longer be called decisive evidence against my client. Huh. There's someone else who could have killed the victim. Not necessarily. The defense believes that the two culprit may have been human. And we have evidence to back up our theory as well. Alright my friends, so I'm going to go ahead and take a break here. 
Much love to you all. Hope you have a wonderful, fantastic, amazing, awesome day. And, uh, yeah, I'm... I still don't think the plume did it. And I'm still thinking that... I, I'm, I'm still thinking that either this case is gonna take a turn for the wild because we're gonna find out that Marlin did it. Or... Or I don't know what to think. Because... I I'm still wondering about that mysterious Dr. Crab. Like, we haven't met any everyone at the aquarium yet. But based on the people we have met, if it's not the plume, it's gotta be Marlin. But I don't think Marlin did it. That's the problem with this case, is I don't think people did it. Which makes me think there's someone we haven't met yet. But we haven't met him yet, so does that mean that they exist or they don't exist? Is this another Steel Samurai case where we meet the uh, the killer in the second part of the case? Huh. Well, anyway, my dear friends, I hope you have a wonderful, fantastic, amazing, awesome day. I will see you again very soon. Until then, so long, and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter and you are brilliant, and you are loved, and you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.